This fortress not only protected the roads between the mountains and the river, but also protected the river port from the land side. Can we meet gazelles, which are a rare species here? Maybe we will meet them on our way now. Our car got stuck in the sand here, and our companions were far away from us. The Aral Sea. We know that it is drying up. The sea is being replaced by the desert. The work is being done to change the ecological environment in the region for the better. This time, the expedition crew traveled to the Republic of Karakal, Pakistan to film the remains of the Aral Sea and the surroundings newly opened nature reserves, wildlife, and a number of unique and less studied archaeological monuments, as well as spectacular views of the Ustur Plateau. The distance from Tashkent to Nukus is 1,255 kilometers. It took an average of two hours to get on the plane, flight time and leave the airport. At Nukus International Airport, we met with the staff of the reserves, which were planned to be filmed during the expedition. We discussed the road plan with them. We decided to leave the airport and go to the building of the South Ostjord National Park. How far is it? to our destination. 120 kilometers to Kungrat. The rest of the road is about 100 kilometers. Here we will change our course and head towards the Sudoche Lake system, which is our first destination according to the plan. The lake is located in Muinok and Kungrat districts. Let's take a look at the history of the area before the cars are ready. On the territory of the present-day Karakal Pakistan, people have been living since the late Paleolithic period. At the beginning of the 5th and 2nd millennia BC, people lived mainly in the desert around the Amadara Delta, the Aral Sea and the Caspian Sea. At the end of the 2nd millennium BC, irrigated agriculture emerged in the area. An hour later, all organizational matters were resolved. We are heading towards Lake Sudochi with a few staff members from the reserve. The distance from Nukush to this lake is 220 kilometers. About 180 kilometers of them are asphalt, and the remaining 40 kilometers are uneven roads on the Ustyard Plateau. We have a long way to go, so we will continue to tell you about the history of the area until we reach the destination.
In the 7th and 4th centuries BC, the Sak Masajas tribes lived in the deserts along the Amadara Delta, the Aral Sea, and the Caspian Sea. In the 6th and 8th centuries, the Turkic tribes were partially mixed with the local population. In the 8th and 10th centuries, a local people began to form on the basis of the Bijanak and August tribes. Due to the misuse of the Amidaria and Sudara waters in the 1950s, the area of the lake, which was the fourth largest in the world, is now much smaller. This has had a serious impact on the ecosystem of the region. The water area of the lake has been greatly reduced. Today, instead of a huge water area, there are only a few small lakes. But even so, the unique nature of this place, the wonderful air of the steep, the beautiful scenery give people a good mood. Reserve officials say that there are about 40 plant species in the Aral Sea region that do not grow in other regions in the world. They are widely used in medicine. Now we are passing through Kongra district. Its area is more than 50,000 square kilometers. Every creature or plant in nature is full of mystery. If we study them closely, we will see amazing things. Let us see this in the example of the camel, which has been used since ancient times and is familiar to all of us. Here we came across a herd of camels. The lush of this animal are too layered, covering them completely when it closes its eyes. And even in strong sandy winds, no dust enters the camel's eyes at all. Even so, the camel's sharp eyes can see very far. The camel can smell from 11 kilometers away. The tiny hairs inside the camel's nose and small ears do not transmit sand particles at all, even in strong winds. A camel with a load of 200, 300 kilograms can easily cover a distance of 150 kilometers in 10 hours. The camel's hooves are soft and therefore do not sink into the sand even if there is a load on it. It collects up to 120 kilograms of fat in its hams. It also reserves up to 200 liters of water per drink. It can move with a load without drinking water and without food for up to two months at moderate temperatures and for two weeks at very hot temperatures. At this time, the fat and water in the camel's hump are absorbed into the body as energy. During its trip, the camel loses a quarter of its weight, but this does not affect its physical strength at all. The lion camel lowers its long neck to get up. The camel can stand up even if it is overloaded. No animal can stand up with so heavy loads on it. The muscles of the mouth are energetic, yet the lips are soft and the middle is torn adapted to eating any food. The camel can recognize the voice of the person feeding it even years later. The thick skin on its chest and knees protects it from burns when it lies on sand heated to more than 50 degrees Celsius. If a camel travels 450 kilometers in three days, how far will it travel in two weeks? This means that in any case it can reach the place where there is grass and water or it can cross any desert on earth in two weeks.
after another hour in the car, we approached the Uster Plateau. From afar, a vast plateau is visible. In each of its layers is hidden a million-year history. The part of Ustert belonging to our country covers an area of more than 70,000 square kilometers. Scientific sources say that an ocean existed here millions of years ago. On the surface of the steep cliffs that rise to the Ustert Plateau, the traces of the sea, wives that once existed here are clearly visible. Here is a hill called Chink, surrounded by ravines. Chink is a Turkish word meaning steep rock. As we climbed over it, we felt the winds blowing from the west to the east and from the north to the south. The soil layer of the area is composed of thin, sticky rock. Beneath the soil layer is fossil sea sediment. spring the Ustert Plateau is completely covered with flowers. This huge flower garden creates a very beautiful landscape. After two weeks the flowers wither and the steep turns gray as it is now. The plateau is a very dangerous place for drivers with many underground cavities or one-meter layers of dust. Mostly when it rains, deep muddy bits that look like small puddles. It is impossible to get out of such puddles without the help of someone. This habitat is a botanical geographical. There are more than 120 natural lakes in Karakal, Pakistan. Of these, Lake Sudochi is bordered on one side by the Usturt Plain and on the other side by the Kongrat and Moinak districts. We are on the shores of one of the largest lakes in the Karakal, Pakistan. Lake Sudochi has favorable conditions for migratory birds to live. Our task is to protect them, to preserve natural complexes. According to ornithologists, flamingos known locally as red geese mainly land in Karakal, Pakistan for feeding before flying long distances. Lake Sudoche is home to a variety of birds. About one million birds can be seen here during migration period every year.
We are now at the starting point of Lake Sudochi, together with our expedition team. Here, 117 species of birds build nests. The area serves as an important habitat for feeding and nesting of globally endangered birds. In some years, more than 86,000 long-distance migratory birds have been found in the lake. Busy with filming this place, we were left behind by our companions. We need to reach them quickly because even our companions do not know exactly where we are going. As a result, we may get lost. In the 1950s, there was a fishing town on the shores of the lake where hundreds of people lived. The last inhabitants of Urga left these lands in 1971. Now it's even harder to imagine that the fishing town looked like at that time. We have to go with our team to this fisherman's house in the ruins of Urga. The ruins of the town along the plateau distract us. We didn't know which way to go. Fortunately, a half an hour later, trusting the intuition of the reserve staff, we found the right path and arrived at our destination. It took us six hours to drive from Nagus to here. Today, tourists from all over the world come to see the situation in the Aral Sea region. They are mainly interested in the history, culture, and the lifestyle of the peoples of the Aral Sea region. Today, we have met such tourists in Urga. They were finishing their trip here and preparing to leave to see the current shores of the Aral Sea. I was born in Moscow and now live in Argentina. By fate, I first came to the beautiful city of Tashkent. And now I'm in Karakal, Pakistan, which has a very stunning nature. They welcomed us well. There is no language problem. The translators are also good. I feel at home. These places remind me of my childhood. It used to be a fishing town here. I'm glad to see beautiful places, wonderful people. I plan to come here again with my friends in the future. I wanted to see the Aral Sea for many years. The drying up of the lake is a huge environmental issue. I travel a lot, so I know that such environmental situation is a painful issue. The main purpose of my coming here is to draw public attention to the problem of the Aral Sea through the internet and social network. I intend to call everyone to solidarity. If we all work together to correct the mistakes we have made over the years, we can certainly succeed. True, people have different worldviews, but we need to understand that we cannot live forever. The Aral Sea is drying up because of us. It's our human duty to return the Aral Sea for future generations. This is a problem not only for Uzbekistan, and Kazakhstan, but for the whole world. I would like all countries to cooperate in saving the Aral Sea. The countries through those territories, the Amadarya and Sudara rivers flow, play an important role in solving this problem. Our greatest investment in the happiness of future generations is the money we spend today to save the Aral Sea. <laughs> Yeah.
Я сама давным-давно аргентинка. Я живу в Аргентине. Я родила моих детей в этой стране. Мой муж и я travel a lot. Мы have been to Peru, Iceland, Cambodia, India. When I came to Uzbekistan, I was amazed to see tolerant and open-minded people. The fresh air, the delicious food, the hospitality and respect of the people are unlike any other country. In general, everything here is wonderful and unique. I had an offer to make more effective use of these opportunities. Your roads in the city are good, but in some of your tourist attractions, roads need to be repaired. Even driving in my car designed for uneven roads was much harder on these roads. It would be good to build small toilets in such tourist attractions. Conditions for tourists need to be improved. Iceland, for example, is made up of glaciers, while Peru is a poor country. We spent a month in Cambodia and India, but in these countries the quality of road is good, there are all favorable conditions in places where tourists stop. Here are my thoughts. If you create good amenities for tourists, if you repair the roads, tourists like us would be very happy and travel as they wish. A lot of work is being done to develop tourism in Karakal, Pakistan. We see that the number of tourists is growing every year. Now the weather is cool, but the number of tourists visiting Karakal, Pakistan is gradually increasing. We didn't expect so many tourists to come during the pandemic. I think this is due to the interest of tourists in the Aral Sea. The nature of the Aral Sea, the reed beds here mainly attract eco-tourists. They are getting great impressions from here. A lot of work is being done to develop tourism in Karakal, Pakistan. In particular, zoos are being established, yurts are being built along the Aral Sea. Tourists are different, they want all the conditions for them. We have a few tourism problems that need to be solved, of course. I hope we will eliminate all of these problems in the future. We have to create good conditions for tourists to travel. We need to realize that every tourist is important to us. After talking to the tourists, we started to get acquainted with the environment. Suddenly we heard the sound of flamingos in the distance. We are going through the reeds. We saw flamingos in the distance. We are trying to get closer to them now. It was getting dark but we were very curious to see them. We couldn't shoot them when we came here a few years ago. So we decided to find flamingos, although it was late. But unfortunately, the boats on the shore were taken away by fishermen. Do you hear that? The sound of flamingos can be heard from the lake behind their reed beds. What shall we do now? Taking a risk, we started walking through the reeds. It's hard to walk because the reeds are thick and there is a swamp beneath them, but it's really fun. At first, there was little water under our feet. Then after a short walk, we came to a reed bed that grew in the swamp. Now, in addition to the difficulty of walking, there is a risk of drowning. As we held the reeds tightly to keep the balance, their sharp tip cut our fingers. At the moment, one cameraman began to draw. We barely pulled him out. One of our partners say, we have to go back. We can't go through the reeds, it's too far. But the sound of the flamingos fascinated us so much that we didn't want to go back. Then several members of the group stepped back. 
The rest begin to move forward. After a five minute walk, we'll reach it, the lake shore. There are flamingos five or six hundred meters away from us, but it is impossible to get there without a boat. At that moment, the fishermen who heard our noise from afar came to help us. Fortunately, the fishermen came in the boat, otherwise we would have stayed here in the swamp. Look, flamingos are flying. They are visible from afar. The sun is setting. We are now trying to get as close to the flamingos as possible. If we find out their location today, we hope to come and shoot them tomorrow morning. For now, we will try to get as close to them as possible. We boarded a fishing boat and started floating towards the flamingos. But unfortunately, it is getting dark and becoming difficult to get a clear picture of the birds. Moreover, the wind began to blow. The wind can overturn our boat. So we went back with regret. We are floating a boat through the reeds. They have come to help us and are taking us ashore. The night has begun. We stayed among these reeds for a while. We have to be careful anyway. We decided to come here tomorrow morning with the fishermen and take pictures of the birds. We are about to stop our program here for now and we will continue the topic in the next episode.